big news yesterday, I guess. This broke last night. Fox News being sued once again. They just settled two major lawsuits, the 70, uh, 780-ish million dollar settlement against Dominion for um, all of their irresponsible coverage about the election results in 2020. Then the $12 million settlement with the former Tucker Carlson producer who sued for a toxic workplace. They still have the Smartmatic uh, lawsuit out pending. Another voting technology company that they lied about. They're seeking billions of dollars. I'm sure they'll settle for less than that at some point. But that's like a lot of payouts. Plus, now this. Okay, so Ray Epps. He was just a standard fascist. (laughs) Just kidding. I mean, I don't want to, you know, whatever. But like, uh, sure. Just a standard MAGA nut job, right? Yeah, he went because he he went because he had concerns about election integrity. Yeah, he he was at January 6th. So he was either a uh, a fascist or a propagandized idiot. Either way, not a good. But but he did, you know, speak about how he much he loved Tucker Carlson and Fox News before this. Um, Yeah, as I was saying. So he was there on January 6th. And um, somehow he became the subject of a bunch of conspiracy theories about him being an undercover agent for the government there to instigate violence as a way for, you know, the deep state to take down Trump supporters, because we all know things about the CIA and the FBI and the NSA and the deep state. They they really hate conservatives. Um that's obviously made up but it was repeated a bunch of times on fox news and we'll play some of those instances for you particularly on tucker carlson's programs and i think that's as we kind of pull at this thread it's becoming a little bit more clear that this plus the toxic workplace might have been the impetus to sideline tucker force him out not let him out of his contract so he couldn't be on the air through the presidential election and protect themselves legally in some way maybe they had a sense that this was coming um ray epps as a result of this had to sell his uh his ranch in arizona and his business according to his lawyer because he was facing so much harassment people were selling uh like arrest ray epps merch but this is from npr they spoke to his lawyer and there's some really fascinating quotes in this and then we'll play some of tucker's coverage but according to epps's attorney michael teeter epps and his wife were fox viewers and carlson's carlson fans whose lives were turned upside down by the network epps said he and his wife had to sell their home and give up their wedding business and move to a mobile home in utah He believed in Donald Trump and he believed the lies that Fox told, Teeter says. The fact that uh, then Fox would take one of their viewers and turn him into the villain of one of their conspiracy theories demonstrates what we've known for a while, which is Fox News does not care about its viewers. This is the attorney uh, speaking to NPR. Days after the Dominion settlement, Fox stripped Carlson of his primetime show, seeking to sideline him until his current contract ends, uh, which is after the upcoming elections. I mentioned that earlier. According to Chadwick Moore, who has written a biography of Carlson, his show was to focus once more on Epps the evening that he was ousted. I just want to repeat that. He was ousted unceremoniously, right? Right before he was supposed to go on air. And it seems to be the case that he was going to talk about this guy, Ray Epps. Carlson was one of the primary defendants in the Dominion suit, which showed him to be privately attacking the network's reporters for publicly contradicting Trump, even though he, as he acknowledged, they were correct. This final part is also interesting here. Other Fox hosts hosts stoked the emotional fires that fueled the January 2021 protest to a greater degree than Carlson. Yet after the siege, Carlson quickly embraced a series of contradictory conspiracy theories. He argued that the brutal attack was essentially a rally that got a bit rowdy. And he also claimed that the federal government and anti-governmental protesters from Antifa and instigated it. I mean, it's very clear that like the the, and and, 
immediately, like on the day, I heard people like in, like my parents were talking to su- suggesting this was Antifa. That was in North Dakota. Oh, so yeah. I heard it either through the radio and stuff like that. And, and it's very clear that all of this emphasis, which I think Greenwald's also um, um, played into, is is basically to make a day that it should be a referendum on the extreme right in this country, uh, one about government conspiracy. And like the conspiracy to me is like, uh, like w- how this was allowed to happen so significantly not that like it was completely instigated by the uh by the feds like it's it, which is, well that yeah. would be ridiculous i mean it, 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 if anything there was as matt saying too little uh t- this was taken way uh they should have prepared as if it was as if it was uh you know a black lives matter protest and there would have been way larger barriers and they stuff should like have that. activated bill barr and activated him very strongly i know he'd resigned by that point and um, I, like, partly the, in part because of this kind of crap well and probably i think that like another reason that why there might not have been the response is because a lot of the fbi is actually sympathetic to a hundred percent a hundred percent Epps became a touchstone in re- reconciling those uh, so far baseless theories. Carlson's claims presented on his show and in a three-part series called Patriot Purge on the Fox Nation streaming service led to the resignations of two Fox commentators, Jonah Goldberg and Stephen Hayes. Anchor Brett Baer and then Fox News Sunday host Chris Wallace objected to the top to top network officials. Wallace signed with CNN shortly after. As recently as this March, however, Carlson once more invoked the specter of federal involvement in the attack on the Capitol. Let's let's play that one first. A lot of this was clearly influenced by federal agents or informants. It was OK, Carlson told viewers. This is a part of the clip that we're about to play, right? The March 2022 time. Whatever's on the sound sheet here. Yeah. Um, a lot of this was clearly influenced by federal agents or informants. It was OK, Carlson told viewers, but I did not want to suggest that it, uh, someone was a federal agent or informant unless I knew for a fact, because you could really get someone in trouble. It's very clear something very strange is going on with Ray Epps, he said. I mean, don't lie to my face. The Ray Epps thing isn't isn't organic. Sorry. So like this is the kind of thing that's opening them up to litigation. Let's play some of this here. Um, I might have the dates wrong. There are just so many instances where Tucker talked about this. So this is a separate one. This is when he had a, a graphic here that says Fed Epps. We'll just play a little bit of what he said. Nor does anyone in authority want to talk about Ray Epps. Ray Epps, of course, is the man who was caught on tape encouraging the crowd outside the Capitol, both on January 5th and 6th, to commit felonies by rushing inside. Now, what's interesting is that the January 6th committee, under public pressure, did in the end interview Ray Epps. Now, we don't have all of the committee's records about that interview. We should, but we don't. But some uh, have been released, and what they tell is a remarkable story. In the testimony that we have, the committee coaches Ray Epps on how to answer questions about his involvement. Quote, I was in the front with a few others. I also orchestrated it. I helped get people there. End quote. Now, Epps admitted that in a text message to a relative on January 6th. He's admitting crimes. No. He's never been even charged for those crimes. But what's so fascinating is that when all right, so you guys can pause it here. You can pause it here. You can see someone on the committee responds this the Ray Epp or Fed Epps graphic. There, he's admitting maybe to the crime of potentially trying to overturn the election, not the uh, "I'm a Fed" thing. But this was the most egregious one um, in his daytime thing that he did, where he kind of you know tried out some of the extremists that he might eventually have on his primetime show. This is where. Elijah Schaefer. Oh, Tim Pool guest, Elijah yeah, Schaefer, who Tim... uh, that guy clipped. Yeah. Um, it's, it's so funny how full, full circle this stuff little ecosystem. Comes. Yeah, the, the, uh, the neo-Nazi shooter, this was the, ep- uh, the guest that he screenshotted episodes of and, and posted uh, mm-hmm. from Tim Pool show, also was ousted from the blaze for being a sexual harasser, allegedly. Yeah. Elijah Schaefer speaking to Tucker Carlson on his program about Ray Epps. And yeah. this is like these quotes, I think, are included in the lawsuit. And because Schaefer is important here because Schaefer specifically talking about documentary work he did um, on January 6th at the Capitol. And he said that he saw Epps participating in behavior that made him think he was a federal agent. Well, I mean, he's an expert, right? 
right? And experts can make mistakes. Oh, wait, like, but that is important, right? To the, uh, how far this lawsuit can go. This isn't somebody who actually is in law enforcement or has knowledge of this kind of stuff. This is a well-known hack and propagandist who spewed this kind of thing, and it's going to just help Epps' case. The entire year of 2020 was BLM and Antifa. It's, ter it's terrifying, and you have to ask why. So why were they so intent on shutting down your reporting and the reporting, the honest reporting of others? So you were happened to be standing very close to a man called Ray Epps, who is a leader of what we're told is a right wing extremist group. He has not been indicted. Based on what you saw personally, did Ray Epps seem to be encouraging people to break the law that day? 100 percent. I, I did not see any violence occurring. I don't think anybody that was at the front lines went with the intent to do anything other than to protest peacefully. There were barriers, but there was one sure. individual who was whispering in people's ears, the very people that instigated the attacks, the ones who pushed the barrier, who are being prosecuted for injuring a Capitol officer, a female who wasn't wearing a helmet, who still has head injuries to this day, I, I found out. They're all being prosecuted, but the man who instigated it, who was, who was starting the violence, for some reason the FBI is no longer interested in him. And I've spoken to prosecutors, I've spoken to defense attorneys, because obviously that's my point. Sorry, just pause it real quick. Um, Elijah Schaefer is a guy who I heard on a Dave Rubin uh, uh, video with some other people who were there on Jan 6, very concerned about their own actions and maybe they were going to investigate. And there's a story here from the desk. Um, mm. uh, a Fed investigate reporter over U.S. Capitol attack tweet. And just for folks who don't remember this tweet, it was breaking. I am inside Nancy's, Nancy Pelosi's office with the thousands of revolutionaries who have stormed the building. <laughs> to put into perspective how quickly staff evacuated, emails are still on the screen alongside a federal alert warning members of the current revolution. Oh, yeah. But they're just, you know, <laughs> everyone was totally peaceful. Uh, this is in 2021, November. Yeah, yeah, right. So, I mean, it, it's, hey, even though you're a documentarian, this is supposedly your job, it, 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 it's, I think it's he easy himself, to forget. He became part of the story a little bit, and uh, we just brush over that. But I, Yeah, we, we got, and, and then here, I mean, it's one thing for a guest to say this kind of stuff, but this is like the same through line that we talked about related to Dominion, is that, if the employees one it, what you you shouldn't really have guests on to say this stuff if you're not going to push back but it's incumbent upon the employees to provide at least some cover for the company fox news and and give at least nominal pushback and put caveats in place to protect them legally let's see if tucker carlson does that here witness i was there and if there's anybody that i would pick out as a journalist and say that's the man who would be key suspect number one for some reason, the federal government says, well, we're just not interested in him. So we have a lot of tape of Ray Epps the night before encouraging people to break the law and to break into the Capitol. And I'm people sorry, clearly like, think that he's uh, a federal uh, agent. We, the idea that it was one guy telling all these hogs to do it, like they broke br the perimeter in multiple places. I mean, this is classic, classic uh, CYA stuff for people that do something bad and especially if they have no scruples and they're completely without morals <laughs> and loyalty they're gonna just let one guy take the fall um and and it's just they, the problem is they 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 the the out of control q and honors they got this conspiracy in their heads and now tucker just runs with it without any uh qualms honestly because that's they're they're not committed to the truth they're committed to making money here we go they call them that but with your own eyes, you saw this same man encouraging people to do it. I just want to be totally clear. You saw this yourself. Yeah, I will say this. There was a man on a, on a bullhorn or a megaphone, and he was yelling to people to 1776, the front gate. People were not going along, though. People were kind of like, oh, man, they started saying, you're Antifa, and they started yelling at him. So people were not going along with, with, with acts so of violence liar. or encouraging to escalate things. It did not escalate until, well, who we now as identified as Ray Epps began whispering in the ears of certain individuals which led immediately after to the instigation oh, of violence. Oh, he's whispering. You're saying this in public, it's on videotape, and this man has not been indicted, and no one in the Justice Department will explain why, and anyone who asks the question is denounced as some sort of conspiracy theorist. Conspiracy theories are starting to sound like spoiler Here's alerts at this point. Um, <laughs> I'm grateful for your original reporting on that day. Elijah Schaefer, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elijah, for covering your ass and uh, throwing a random Trump supporter under the bus because 
some lunatics in on the internet thought he might be Antifa uh, to save your own ass for your complicity in you and the rest of the revolutionaries storming into yes. Nancy Pelosi's office and potentially screwing over Fox News in the process and Tucker Carlson. Like, this is, you know that meme of the first domino to fall and then the, finally uh, the, the big one does? That's Tucker Carlson getting fired from Fox News, potentially, and also uh, Fox News losing in the in the total totality of these lawsuits, I mean, they're already up to around eight hundred billion dollars just based on the suits that have set those two that have settled so far. The uh, toxic workplace one for Tucker's show and the Dominion one with Smartmatic. And with this coming up, we're going to be well over a billion, potentially into two billion in settlements just from their coverage over the past few years alone and their workplace, which is just like. Thank you, Schaefer. I want to know us that. at what point uh, that Elijah Schaefer, who's uh, reporting Tucker Carlson, uh, apparently proves of um, what at what point on that day he went from, oh, that guy looks like an Antifa provocateur trying to lure us all from this peaceful protest we're doing out here into the Capitol. How he went from that uh, suspicion that he still airs on Tucker uh, months later that Tucker lets him do, uh, how he went from that to moments later saying, again, breaking I'm inside Nancy Pelosi's office with the thousands of revolutionaries who have stormed the building to put into perspective how quickly staff evacuated emails are still on screen alongside a federal alert warning members of the current revolution yeah how did how do you square those two things did you just never bring it up because that's uh, uh, that's like the, the uh, tucker carlson way